perfect. What's up, guys? Welcome to the Do It Movement podcast. This is your host, Martine Jackson, and I've built my six-figure, soon-to-be seven-figure, massive real estate business through commercial investing, rental investing, and wholesaling in Virginia. After college, I worked a series of jobs that I absolutely hated and decided to take life into my own hands. What my journey has shown me is one very important thing. Knowledge is not power. Applied knowledge is power. Each week, I bring you a powerful guest or tip to unravel the real estate game. And my challenge to you is that you take some of that knowledge and do something with it. The Do It Movement is here to help you create the life you desire through real estate. Now let's get to it. Hello today, Do It Movement listeners. This is your host, Martine Jackson. Today, I have a really special guest with me. I have Kariba Bernson. How you doing today, Kariba? Hey, I'm all right. I'm hanging out. (laughs) All right, cool, cool, cool. I'm glad that you joined me today. Um, I feel like your story is going to be really inspiring to a lot of people. Um, It's a lot of people that, you know, they listen to the podcast and now watch the podcast and um they 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 may be working and a lot of people don't like their jobs like let's just be be real about it people don't like their jobs and they want to get out but they don't know how um i think that your story be really inspiring to them so uh let's i guess your turn to talk Uh, you tell us us your story why did you decide to get into real estate what made you want to do this well, my story is definitely very different from all I can guarantee almost everybody's story. Um, my story started when I had got locked up for my third DUI. So a third DUI in Virginia is a felony. So <laughs> with that being said, uh, you got to do some prison time. So I spent 16 months locked up away. And, uh, and the funny story about that is I asked God, for some time to that I needed to sit me down and think about what I wanted to do in life, and that was my reward. So you wasn't, you wasn't expecting that. <laughs> no, not at all, not at all. So, uh, so in that downtime, uh, by the time I got moved to prison from jail, they uh, had a good library actually, and I started looking at framing, uh, framing houses, and that's what I was looking at. And, um, and then I found some real estate books. So I started looking at some real estate books and I saw something about, it had at least nine different ways to finance a deal or get funding for a deal. And I started looking into that and reading into that. And then from that point on, I studied real estate until I came home. And then uh, I saved enough money while I was uh, down on my downtime. I was working in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. Making like thirty two dollars, thirty two uh, cents a, a a hour, fun times, uh, and saved up enough money where if my job wasn't going to take me back, then I would I was going to buy a lawnmower and cut grass. And then um, my job took me back. I still ended up cutting grass, and that's how I ended up with enough renovation money to fund my first deal and the reno which doesn't didn't cost much because i had learned everything i needed to know while i was down so i I did all the repairs myself so Mm -hmm. i literally came from nothing and turned it into something wow you must have cut a lot of grass to have enough reno money (laughs) (laughs) hey yeah it was a lot of a lot of yards i was uh i was driving around the neighborhood in a in a lawnmower and uh cutting grass and that's how I saved up the extra money on top of what I was already making from my job. So, mm-hmm. which, you know, it wasn't a ton, ton of money, but, but I was paying back debts, uh, trying to get, at least I thought I needed to get out of debt to get into real estate, which wasn't the case, but that comes with experience. Right, right. And at this time, were you like, because I know you're pretty handy, like you know how to fix a lot of stuff. Were you doing yeah. this rental yourself? Or? Uh, yes, because in my mind, this is before I started going to real estate meetings and networking. I thought, you know, the real only way was two things. You either need a whole lot of money 
so you can pay people to do it or you just need to do it yourself. Mm -hmm. So since I was only making roughly $33,000 a year, I was like, well, I can't afford to pay somebody 20 grand, 30 grand to renovate this because I thought it was going to be on my own efforts right. that um, I had to take it upon myself and do it myself, which is a good thing because now I know the fair market prices of, and the value of things and, and why you shouldn't be paying too much for some stuff. I'm like, all you got to do is this. Like, right just random like nobody should be paying $35 for one outlet like come on and they gotta change every outlet in the house at $35 no right. <laughs> you wasn't with it okay yeah you're right your store I, I wasn't expecting that I didn't know that about you oh yeah yeah what's the name of the book that you was reading by the way that, that you know your sit down book and told you about all these different ways to finance you said nine different uh, ways I, finance, I, right? I, I, this was uh in 2010 i'm not quite sure the name of the book but um right. it was pretty much a general book they went over balloon payments they went over a whole bunch of just normal basic real estate terms oh like if you were to get money from the bank yeah yeah pretty right. much it didn't go gotcha. about private lending you know nothing like that but it just went over regular ways uh okay. about financing deals yeah. Right. I got you. And so you were working your job and you you left your job about how long ago? Like you've been doing this full time uh, for a while. Yeah, I've been going on three years out from my uh, job. And being that I didn't make a substantial lot of money, it was easier to leave. So mm -hmm. for the people that are, you know, a little higher in the income bracket, it'll take a little longer for you to leave or you just got to hustle a little harder. Yeah. So that that's the only thing after that. Um, so it it was very easy for me to leave. All I had to do was replace five hundred dollars a week, and that was <laughs> fair. That was fairly easy, and you know, right. and uh, so I left, and uh, and I left on Valentine's Day, and it was it was symbolic for follow your heart. So that's why I put my two weeks notice in on Valentine's Day. The owner of the company, she she said, uh, "Oh hey," because everybody calls me Link. Uh, she was mm -hmm. like, hey, Link, how you doing? What you doing? Did you leave a, these Hershey Kisses in here? I was like, no, I didn't leave you in the chocolate. She was like, oh, okay, so why are you in here? I was like, well, I was letting you know I'm doing good in real estate. And she was like, oh, that's great. And um, I was like, and because of that, I'm putting my two weeks notice in. She was <laughs> like, oh, now I'm sad. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so uh, so uh, I broke it to her, and she was – she was actually because uh, she's a woman and she was a minority for tax break benefits. She was the owner of the company. So mm -hmm. um, it was her, it's family owned business. It was her. So I let her know first because I was, I felt like I was close to her. And then um, I let her know my intentions. And then, you know, after two weeks, they threw me a party and I left and I, I still have this big postcard somewhere in here uh, that everybody signed for. And, you know, they, congratulated me whatever the case was but it you know you can work a dead-end job it wasn't going anywhere and I told myself personally I was like this is going to be my last job I'm not going anywhere else right. you know uh, other than working for myself I was like I got to find something different and then it just dawned on me you know real right. estate what does everybody need everybody needs somewhere to live so we've been doing this full-time for about the same amount of time I didn't know that Oh yeah. I, I've been nice. this is this is September now. So I've been this is my three year mark too of oh, full sweet. time. So ooh, awesome. I mean I was forced out, but <laughs> <laughs> we won't we won't hey. get that. <laughs> hey, as long as, as long as the stores lead down the same path, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's all good. Okay, so um, the, you know, I really wanted you on because I just feel like your story would be very inspiring because a lot of people get into real estate because, I mean, we, we want money, but I think more importantly, we want freedom. And, right. and a lot of people, they, you know, they don't like their jobs. They really want to be out of them and they just don't know what to do. Or maybe they just, I don't know, they don't have that. Let's take the, the dive factor. Let's, you know, jump off the cliff. You know, what they say, yeah, entrepreneurs, right. fall yeah, out yeah. the plane and build a parachute on the way down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So build it on the way down. So it seems like you were very strategic about it, being that you knew that you need to replace your income. And then I think it's a good point that you bring up that, you know, the less you make, the easier it is. 
because that that kind of goes back to like the cash flow game, you know. Yeah, that's our yeah, game. yes, <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> if you was a doc, if you were a doctor in the cash flow game, you know you. Oh my god! <laughs> game, like I'm never gonna be able to get out of the rat race. I just right, have right. too many expenses. Right. So, and I, I guess the caveat of it is that you know you make more, you tend to spend more. You need to you know fit a certain standard because you make so much money or whatever. Like if you're a doctor. The, you know, the mm -hmm. perception is, well, I need to be driving a Benz. Yeah, 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 exactly. Like money. Exactly. And so, like, the game really just brought to our attention that you need to, um, you you need to have those expenses low. And then, like, if you don't make that much money, I mean, you got no choice but your expenses to be low. Because right, you don't right, 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 right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, so cool. So just walk us through okay now you said that you were you know in this cell you're reading the book you're starting to see the light you said i'm gonna you know start mowing lawns and i'm gonna get enough money for this renovation but what i guess what was your plan like how did you like what was your plan of attack how did you know like who to market to are you buying stuff you know cat like regular normal normal market rates or are you trying to get things at a discount or well, let's talk well, us through that when when I was coming home, the market was just after it was two years fresh from the crash. Right. So I, I was I saw houses for thirty forty thousand, and then mm -hmm. um, my first very deal because at that time I was thirty six, and when I came home, you know, I, of course I was living with my mom. Mm -hmm. So what I did was I got the first house with an intent to a uh, house hack. So I was going to have somebody living with me, but it didn't pan out like that. So I didn't end up staying there because my, my mortgage, I bought a $30,000 uh, townhouse mm -hmm. uh, with FHA funding. So I think I put down like $1,200 or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, my mortgage on a 30-year mortgage on $30,000 was... Two hundred and thirty-five dollars a month. <laughs> I was like, "You was winning." <laughs> yeah, that's a cable bill. I was like, "All right." I said, like, "Okay, well, nice." Since I did that, I was like, "Well, the rent in the in the area at the time was eight hundred dollars." I said, "Well, okay, I'll just rent this out," and that was seven months after renovating because I was literally learning renovations and mm -hmm. doing it at the same time. Right. And, uh, so I, after I pieced everything together and um, got everything straight, I just rent it out to somebody who was already local in the area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then just fast forward to the future. Normally when I work on stuff, it's the people in the area. I normally don't have to put the signs up or mm -hmm. anything up and people inquire about the house and the rent and it's already rented by the time I'm finished in most cases. Oh, wow. That's right. good. That's good. So for your um, FHA loan, like I hear a lot of times, and I guess it's because I'm going through a lot of refinancing <laughs> of properties, uh, yeah, that something. they don't like to make <laughs> loans lower than 50. And that wasn't a problem for you? It wasn't a problem because uh, as long as you had cash down, I was with uh, Movement Mortgage, mm -hmm. and um, they specialize in loans around about that price. Mm -hmm. And um, what they do, they... The, the ink wasn't even dry yet. They'll sell the lump. So they sell it. They sell it to somebody else real quick. And then, you know, that's that's what they do. You know, that's it. Right. And then they, so they sold it to, uh, I want to say USDA, uh -huh. uh, something like that. They sold it to them. And then, you know, I was paying them until I refinanced it. So uh -huh. I just pulled all the money out of my townhouse that I invested in it. And then, you know, got the renter paying it back. Right. So best thing ever is like free money. <laughs> so okay so that that's your first one and it sounds like they're wholesaling mortgages like they right yeah pretty much yeah oh, that's much. <laughs> yeah that's that a, sounds brilliant that's a, i know it's a it's a it's a, it's a decent hustle okay. <laughs> they do good okay cool so you you get this house you tried to get a roommate that didn't work um you ended up just renting out the whole thing and you refinanced it. So what was next? What was your next plan of action? Oh, the next plan of action was a mystery crack house. It was, uh, <laughs> yeah, so if you get a house and you see just spoons and plates everywhere, you have to know people are doing drugs off of all that. Mm -hmm. There's no forks, no knives, nothing, just spoons and plates. <laughs> but it, uh, that house was uh, crazy. I call it the rat house mm -hmm. because 
since I at that time I was still working, so I would come home at five thirty, and then I would mm-hmm. renovate until about eight or ten o'clock. Mm-hmm. Uh, How'd you? Well, but let's let's start with this. How'd you find the crack house? Oh, uh, MLS, MLS list. Okay. So uh, I saw it, it was fifteen thousand dollars. I was like, well, I wonder why it's fifteen thousand dollars. Let's go find <laughs> out. So uh, <laughs> when I went over there, uh, the whole back back uh patio and back door were was boarded up uh-huh. so with it being boarded up and it was a row of townhouses uh-huh. um they had they didn't have an hoa so it was no real standards on everybody keeping a certain level of decor uh-huh. outside so people uh-huh. had random fences everywhere so in other words you couldn't see the back of the house so uh-huh. i had no idea what the back of the house looked like uh-huh. so um I took it upon myself to go over there a little later, jump a gate, and then finally see the back of the house. It was full of, like, uh, just brush, overgrown overgrown brush, couches, random stuff. Mm-hmm. So uh, after about a month of renovations, and I stayed after 9 o'clock, 9 o'clock was when the train came, and the train runs in the back of the house and shook the whole house. Mm-hmm. So uh, I was like, well, I'm not going to be able to renovate this. So, uh, or not rent of it. I'm not going to be able to uh, rent it out easily. But mm-hmm. until, unless it's somebody who already lives in the, in, in the area. So mm-hmm. I renovated it, uh, 15000 I renovated it for 9000 because it was my own efforts. Mm-hmm. Um, and I refinanced it for 38000 And then I sold it to someone for uh, $50,000 in the area. Oh, that was so good. I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't have to come back over here ever, and I'm perfectly happy with that. So that was, yeah, that was the second house, and that was, it was great. But you know, I made it work. Did you sell it, finance it to them, or you just sold it outright? Uh, sell it, finance. Oh, good. Yeah, so they, yeah, they, they were, uh, they were pretty decent people. They just didn't have a track history because they had on and off job temp services and all other stuff. So. You know, they just flat, flat out fee. Pay the tax, pay right. the insurance. Fifty thousand dollars is yours. You can have it. Right. Cool. Cool. That's awesome. And then, like for this deal, for the funding, did you just use what you refinanced out of the other one, or did you get another loan for this? Or how did? Uh, when I refinanced, I had already pulled my money out of the deal. So by the time they put money down, with it was just extra money. It right, is. so well, I guess what I'm saying is, when you got it, you just used the money you had. Oh, 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 uh, it was yeah, it was a refinance from the uh, from the first house I was supposed to live at. Yeah, so you so, were smart. Uh, you refinance, and you didn't say, "Oh, let me go get the new uh, <laughs> the new BMW." Right, definitely not. Definitely you said, not. I'm, I'm trying to get up out of here. <laughs> right, exactly, and that's and that's one thing you have to kind of control your desires. I, I want to say if, if you want to do this for the money, um, I don't think it's enough driving force. But if you want to do it for a better future, if you want you know your kids to have something to know, they don't have to go to extra school and they can take over the family investments and still be fine. Like like I always tell my nieces, don't go to school to get a job. Go to school for something you actually want to do. Now, if you want to be a doctor, it's different. But you are, you also got to know you're going to be in a different tax bracket. And you're going to get right. taxed the hell out of it. But <laughs> if you want to go for something you want to do, let these investments pay, pad the way and get you there. It's just right. a lot better. You're, you're, you're taxed differently than you are as an employee. Right, right, right. Okay. So now you got two. At this point, how much are you cash flowing? At, uh, at, at that point, um, my my mortgage went from uh, two thirty five to three fifty at the first townhouse, mm-hmm. and I'm still making eight hundred. And then what that essentially means is the I don't have a mortgage on the second house because it was bought free and clear, so to speak. Even though it was the money from the other one, but I still kind of put it together. So yeah. roughly, it's like what over one hundred and seventy-five dollars, a little bit over one hundred and seventy-five dollars for two mortgages. Since mm-hmm. I got two houses, so at the other house, I'm making six hundred dollars, and you know it's free and clear, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And I don't have to do anything else at that one because you know the the the, the tenant or the new owner 
pays for everything. They got to right. control the maintenance and, and everything. So so for the first one, they pay 800 or that's the cash flow? Uh, they pay 800 It was uh, – so split the difference between 800 and uh 350 Right. So that's like five fifty plus the six. Uh, four, yeah, four four fifty, yeah, and then plus six. So four fifty right. and plus six. Right, yeah. right, right, right. Four fifty yeah. plus six. So you're a little yeah. over a thousand dollars now off of two houses. That's right. It's very good. <laughs> right. <laughs> hey, I, I, I had to be like that. I had to be very strategic because hey, I'm not making a ton of money, but I need the deals. And then these are deals that a lot of people aren't looking for because a lot of people just either won't lend or they're not familiar with the area. So right. that's where the benefit came in. I'm familiar with the area and it's no risk to me. I'm like, oh, the area is sketchy. Is this another word for saying the area is, is, is ghetto or whatever the case was. <laughs> right. But it's, it's, not, it's not ghetto to me because I know the area. So, right. you know, you make money where you fit in it. So okay. it's, money, it's money to be made. Somebody's going to get it. So you said you needed to make five hundred every week. We only had a thousand. Need some more houses. <laughs> right, 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 What's right. Next? <laughs> uh, I think my third one. Uh, oh, my third one was a relatively uh, easy one. It was um, right around the, one of the areas I grew up in, East Bend, mm -hmm. Rico. So mm -hmm. it wasn't it wasn't too bad. I didn't know it was a tenant. It had a tenant already. It was just selling the house. So I came and saw the house, and then one day That's I came to rent. This one was on MLS too? Uh, yeah. All you had a realtor it. helping you or are you just looking yourself? Yes, uh, Angela Gladfelter. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shout was, out to Angela. You, you know what, Angela, <laughs> go Angela. She was, she was hooking me up. She is uh -huh. not, you don't, you will not, you will not find a ton of realtors that's willing to come out for houses thirty and forty thousand dollars. They right. They you know, they're gonna do the same effort, same amount of work in a house that's two hundred thousand versus a house that's thirty thousand. The only difference mm -hmm. is is I'll be buying coming back more versus you getting that first time home buyer that's only gonna buy one time and then you right. won't see them for a long time or if ever again. Right. So that was the difference. So I'm doing more deals and uh helping her quote her a lot better. So right. that was the benefit. Yeah, and of this that. is I mean this is good because to be honest, what takes the most time is the marketing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. You at work working and she's sending you houses. <laughs> right, right, exactly. 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 <laughs> All right, That's cool. Let's up. talk about this next one then. Oh, oh, so uh so when I when I got it, uh that's when the money was getting definitely uh a little funny because um at this point I'm at a I'm at an area where I had to keep putting down the down payment. So the twenty percent mm -hmm. down because I'm outside of my first time is everything's running profit. So you gotta put about twenty mm -hmm. twenty percent down. Mm -hmm. So now things have become more pricey. So I think I put down roughly like eleven thousand dollars on this house. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I didn't know is after I bought it, I was coming to start doing the renovations and a lady was moving in. I was like, well, what part of the game is this? <laughs> <laughs> so I uh, literally didn't touch the house. She wanted it as is to move in. She's still there. It's been five years. She's still there. So mm -hmm. I, I had to raise her rent substantially only because it was a uh, another townhouse but it wasn't an HOA there and now it's an HOA so I, mm. I sent her a letter thanking her for actually paying on time and for you know her just being there just mm -hmm. a regular thank you letter and um, I say if I if I lose you you know I'm, you know I'm sorry but I had to raise your rent $80 mm -hmm. because the the HVAC went out and HOA uh, happened over there, so it was like eighty dollar difference, and a mm -hmm. lot of people can't afford that. It's a big jump if you go right. from if you just all of a sudden you got a you get an eighty dollar extra bill a month. A lot of people can't pay that, so mm -hmm. I was prepared to lose it, even though the the rent in the area was below market. So mm -hmm. she just couldn't, uh, she just wouldn't be able to pay it. But she said she was staying, so she's still there. Right. So for this one, you said that you got the investment loan from the bank. And how mm -hmm. much was your mortgage on this one? Uh, it was roughly, uh, it was still in the threes. You you win for small for mortgage. mortgage of the year. <laughs> <laughs> it was still in the threes. I want to say it was, uh, 
I want to actually say it was two eighty, but I I paid extra like three twenty. Um, oh, you want to pay it all? Uh, well, I was just trying to get more equity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, gotcha. so pay it off fast, just so I can refinance. That's about it. But I refinanced mm-hmm. it once, and um, that was about it. So. So you so you paid two? You said two eighty. Yeah. And then her rent was what? Her rent is seven sixty now. So two eighty seven sixty. So that's about what three four. Four eight. I don't know. <laughs> Let's just say four hundred. We ain't got to calculate. Right, right. Yeah, we don't need to calculate. Need All to calculate. right. So we have four two hundred. <laughs> we getting there. We getting there. What's next? <laughs> uh, next. Okay, next. This is interesting because next. Uh. Like I said, uh, the down payments were getting a little risky. So next, I wandered onto Craigslist, and that's where I was able to leave my job. I ran into a guy mm-hmm. that, so he was a property manager. I didn't know he was a property manager for like three years. But <laughs> he, he, he was like, yeah, I got this house for sale. It's uh, it's five grand down and owner mm-hmm. financing. So that's where everything started to pick up. Um, so what happened was it was a guy who was liquidating a bunch of his houses he didn't want. He was cherry picking, keeping the ones he did want. So he would own the finance, the rest of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he sold me a lot of guys in the South side, uh, a lot of houses in the South side of Richmond uh, or enough houses in a way in the South side of Richmond. They just need like a lot of renovation and um, mm-hmm. a lot of, a lot of time taking on it. Yeah, spent a lot of time. Right. They, were, they were they were crushed. He was a slumlord, realistic. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to put any names out there. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so he slumlord those houses and then just sold them when they was in almost dis- disrepair. So mm-hmm. it was problem property. They had to go over tenant after tenant after tenant, then people don't want it. But you don't understand it's because of the level of renovation you're putting in the house you know you didn't do anything right. in here so nobody wants to live like that so it was right. just basically bring it up to standards i mean and then right. you can rent it out so that's what i did and i i found like four other houses with him uh in a in a uh, owner finance and i'm i'm still going through him to find some deals mm-hmm. and i'm i'm waiting on the deal now that i'm just ready to renovate after i get this deal closed I can work on this other one in uh, Church Hill. It's a small house, but it'll be a decent size profit uh, mm-hmm. when I find it renovated and get it straight. But yeah, he he helped me along the way of uh, going out the door. So two more houses with that guy, and I left my job. Right. So and you're renovating these to refinance. Basically, basically. I like your mindset. <laughs> Well, because not not only are you trying to re- you were replacing your income, but you're also building wealth. Right, and right, and that, you're, re- you're refinancing, and these people are paying off your debt, so this is good debt. It, exactly, and that's the main thing. Like, uh, I got not so, I don't want to say solicited, but they talked to me about four hundred one k in my old job, and uh, the main thing that that caught my mind about four hundred one k when they first mentioned it was it's going to take twenty years for you to really start seeing some mm-hmm. production <laughs> I'm like, how does that sound right to people right. i'm like and then I'm, I'm doing the math in my head i'm like okay but i can buy at this point i started i already started to get into real estate and then they mentioned mm-hmm. 401k and i'm like but at this point i can put down 10 grand and make 10 grand a year with the house right. or, or a little under 10 grand so why is everybody so hip on 401k? And then, you know, it's just a, like a Warren Buffett said, it's a poor man's retirement plan. You know, you you can get somewhere slowly, maybe, but people, <laughs> what people don't know is you can also lose it because right. they're gambling in the stock market. So you right. can also lose that too. I want to recap what you said. You started with putting $1,200 down, right? For the mm-hmm. first property. And then you worked on that property as you lived there. So yeah. you're probably just using the money that you made from your job to fix yeah, it. As basically. You Right. Yeah, then you ended up renting that out. And you mean to tell me <laughs> from putting twelve hundred dollars down to fixing however much you spent fixing it up, but along the way, you were able to do all of this because the rest of them was just snowballs. It was refinance, take the money, put it in another house. Right, you right. Burn, you're burned. <laughs> right, right. And and this was before the burst strategy. I didn't 
care about how cold people were. I was like, I was already, <laughs> I was already doing it. I was like, I don't need a, I don't need an acronym to, right. to make a strategy work. It was common sense. If I don't have to pay taxes on this, mm. and I'm still cash flowing, right. Do it. It makes the most sense. I was like, right. why? Why are people flipping when you can hold on to wealth? Because it's, it's it's a difference between being wealth and being rich. Rich is just a lump sum of money but wealth right. is how long can you keep paying your bills without having to work right so and i want to as these the people are paying off, paying off your houses it's increasing your net worth right exactly <laughs> so i'd rather for somebody else to pay off my house i don't i'm not trying to pay them off i don't care <laughs> right. how much debt they have you know it, hey if it's cash flowing and my basic strategy was have one pay for two so right. if one sits empty, guess what? It doesn't even matter because the other one is paying for it anyway. And so like, right. recover. That's very smart. I don't think people look at it this way. And I know me personally, I've gotten to a point where I don't like to move anywhere unless I have someone else paying the mortgage. Yeah. So right. I, I think right. I'm the way like, <laughs> well, you know, maybe if I got a quad, you know, I'd have to pay <laughs> right, right. paying the mortgage. Like, I, that, right. that's just how I think now. Because why would I pay that off? Like, why? I don't know. It's just right. a different mindset. Why yeah, would I when I can get somebody else to pay that for me? I set up the strategy. That's the value I brought. I gave exactly. you the opportunity to have a nice place to live. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I think, I think the, the key thing that uh, a lot of regular people are uh, missing, and I've talked to somebody, a lot of people on Facebook about this, they don't understand debt. Mm -hmm. So when you don't understand debt, you think of as a regular person with debt, you know, everybody wants to pay stuff off. But mm -hmm. if you're trying to build wealth, then in real estate, then you need to go further into debt. You need to get deep. And as you get deep, then you start to realize, oh, snap, I can leverage this $5,000. It's going to buy me a, well, for me, a $40,000 asset that somebody else is paying off. Right. Like, Wow. And then I'm cash flowing on top of that. Why wouldn't I want to keep going more into debt? And then banks don't understand that, but private lenders and private companies understand that and they don't mind funding you on more deals. Right, right, right. Okay. So roughly from you having your aha to leaving your job, how long did that take you? Uh, four years. Four years, but you it only did $1,200. Yeah, four years. So <laughs> that was that that's was just the, amazing to me. Like I think people think it takes so much. They're like, "Well, I mean, how am I going to get the money for all of this?" Right. You it's, start, you could say if you cut back some of your expenses, you could save twelve hundred dollars to get started. Right. And like I say, it's it definitely can't be a money money being the driver aspect of it. I think you have to have a, a bigger why on the reason why you're doing it. And it right. was just I don't I didn't. Working to 65 does not sound like a plan. Like, how, how does this get packaged and sold to everybody and they'll believe it? Oh, okay, yeah, I'll just work this job to I'm 65 and then I can retire. You can retire brutal. So in most mm -hmm. cases, you're not gonna you're not gonna be well enough to enjoy life. All right. If you can do it earlier, why not? And then it definitely for me, it definitely wasn't 401k. Some people it may have worked back in the day, but it doesn't necessarily work now when you could be doing faster things. And obviously it was faster if I left a job in four years when they told me, yes, yeah, just spend 20 years in 401k and then you'll have this financial ball ready for you when you, uh, when you retire. It just didn't sound like a plan. Mm -hmm. I, I, like, I wanted to reverse engineer uh, the whole saving. Mm -hmm. I think somebody told me save $2 million and then you'll be able to retire. I was like, well, how about you just cash flow the same amount? Right. You get that four or five thousand dollars a month in cash flow, and then that's still the equivalent of two million dollars in the bank. Right. Instead of saving. Uh, why not in the bank in the, in the have, stock market? Why not have the two million in net worth? Because right, it, exactly. You own exactly. assets. <laughs> exactly, and then I'm not. It's not me that's building my network. It's the help of my of my tenants, my residents. So. Right. They helped me out. And, you know, if it weren't for them, man, I wouldn't be able to do it. Right. I think I had one tenant, right? And I don't think she understood where I was coming from because <laughs> she was renting a house for me. And I was like, you know, I really appreciate you renting this house. 
right. like, I don't think she knew where I was coming. She was like, I mean, you're offering the opportunity. I was like, but I really needed someone to rent. I know, I know, right. <laughs> because exactly. it's a nice house, but it's just, it's expensive over here. And I need, you know, somebody to take this, take care of this with me. <laughs> right, it's, exactly. And, then, and that's, that's, a, that's a lot of things. Like, um, you have to be cautious of what's going on because like I still jump from house to house because every house I live in is going to be a future rental house mm -hmm. mainly I don't know when I'm gonna ever get my my real house my main house which is I don't know somewhere slight woody <laughs> mild country but not too far where won't nobody visit me uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh so whenever I get that everything is like a, a future rental house so the issue is every time I renovate it looks you know, decent, mm -hmm. and then you know you don't want to go, and you don't want to go anywhere. But you know, so most of the time, my other houses look way better than the house I'm currently in. <laughs> I'm, I'm still literally working on that one. Right, I'm still working on it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so everything is like a a pre rental. So, but mm -hmm. I'm I'm perfectly fine with that. And you have to be, I guess, at a level of uh, a level of knowledge to know that it's going to be better on, on the other side and you got to kind of control your desires. Like even when I was saving the money up, I was eating noodles and noodles. Hey, I, I, I did you were determined. I you was determined. Like, so some Dave Ramsey stuff. <laughs> I, I'm just saying, I, I, did what it, I did what it took. I would live with my mom, eat noodles and noodles at work. So I wasn't spending that, you know, because $10 a day is $300 a month. I don't care mm -hmm. which way you flip it. It's still going to be $300 a month. $300 a month. That's a mortgage. <laughs> right. Exactly. And before <laughs> and before my mortgage, you know, I was already thinking about that. I didn't think my mortgage was going to be under $300. But the right. whole point was I could be saving more if I just adjust some things. Right. So, and, you know, just, just younger, that I, I just did what it took. You know, is people, people make excuses for a lot of stuff but you can literally get further if you just tighten up a little bit you know it's, it's going to be a short run run it may be a long run but mm -hmm. as long as you're running that's the whole that's the whole point of it just try you know instead right. of just because people talk themselves into and out of everything uh what did henry, henry ford say if you think you can and if you think you can't guess what you're right 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 <laughs> on both of them right so, so hey, I mean, it, you talk yourself right into it. Talk yourself right out of it. So cool. What what type of books are you reading? We need people to have more of your mindset. So what are some books that uh, helped you get to where you are right now? Um, a lot of stuff was natural. Uh, honestly, uh, I had a girl, a girl that I was dating, and uh, she recommended me uh, Robbie Kiyosaki. Uh, I didn't want to read it. I don't like reading books. <laughs> uh, so, but he had an audio book. And I was like, oh, okay, great. Because everything I was telling her, she was like, Robert Kiyosaki says the same thing. You just haven't read the book. I was like, right. why do I need to read the book then? <laughs> <laughs> I already know it. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. So then, you know, I uh, ended up not reading the book. Uh, but I ended up listening to it on YouTube because I love audio books. That's one of my favorite things uh, cuz I can just sit there and enjoy it and it's just better for me to understand stuff like that when it, when I'm listening to it. Uh so and then I just realized yeah she was absolutely right we're we're thinking along the same paths. Uh the the main benefit that I took from it was the uh, the, the taxes when he went over taxes and that was absolutely remarkable to me because people are so busy trying to make extra money but why mm -hmm. aren't you trying to make extra money by cutting your taxes down right. and that alone is a lifesaver for most people and like i try to tell everybody i don't care what you do you can invest in 401k invest in anything you want to but if you're working a regular job get one at least one house because it's a tax shelter mm -hmm. and you're gonna you're gonna help yourself out tax-wise with that one house. You can funnel everything through that. So now you can write your cell phone bill off. You can write everything because you need all that stuff for business. And that's mm -hmm. the biggest, that's the biggest gap between the rich and the poor is that the rich write all their expenses off and then they get taxed on what's left, if there's anything left. Right. So that's the main thing, and that's what a lot of people lack. You need to understand that tax benefit. 
Was there a specific Robert Kiyosaki book that talked about taxes? Uh, it wasn't. Uh, whatever book was before the four quadrants. Okay. Uh, yeah, whatever. I think that was his his first one. Uh, that's the one I liked the best. The four quadrants was was good because it just relayed on where you are in the four quadrants. Like most right. people don't get past employment. If you don't right. get past employment, then you're going to be struggling. It's, it's you're literally check to check, but you have a you're you're going to have a check to check mentality, and that's the right. worst thing about it. Right. Uh, I know it is. It is a book that I've read. That's a part of the Rich Dad series, and I think I've talked about it on the podcast before. But it's um, a tax free wealth, um, and that's by Tom Wilwright. I want to say, mm-hmm. and, and he talks about different types of ways to, you know, to write things off and to how you need to structure things so that mm-hmm. you can pay the least amount of taxes legally. Yeah, right. It's basically, he's like, well, the government incentives like gives you incentives to um, do certain things. If I'm doing what the government wants me to do because they're giving me a tax break, I mean, I'm doing what they want me to do. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, right, right. a lot of people are thinking like, oh, well, I'm trying to weed the system. No, <laughs> if they they're giving you a tax break because they want you to do certain things. Yeah, so right. Exactly. Those exactly. Things, you benefit. Right. Exactly. And uh, don't quote me. My quotes up. But uh, <laughs> this, this this one guy said, you know, you <clears throat> you are you are able to set up your taxes however you want to, whether it benefits you or the government, it's up to you. Right. Hey, I'm I'm setting up everything to benefit me. Why would you know I continue to support something that's it's already not even it's it's no it's not even no illegal uh, illegal uh, and you can definitely. Uh, follow up on this it's no it's nothing legally saying you have to pay taxes it's nothing nobody can mm-hmm. find it. this guy betted this uh this lady that worked at irs fifty thousand dollars that she couldn't find it and she didn't mm-hmm. find it and she she resigned from the IRS. <laughs> but that's 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 on another thing he couldn't get his fifty thousand dollars right right she, she tried to get that fifty thousand dollars she couldn't get it because it was no legal it was nothing legally saying you had to pay taxes so i said if I was I, I read something and uh, I said if I ever had to join the workforce again, I would join as a nonprofit. That way, I wouldn't have to pay for taxes. What's one thing you wish you would have known? Um, uh, starting out, uh, network. I was uh, I'm a lone survivor, so I did everything by myself. Uh, I wish I would have realized the power of networking. I could have got further a lot faster with right. uh, help, and you definitely need uh, help whether you know it or not. Right. Your network is your net worth. And yeah, definitely. What I'm noticing too, because I've been networking a ton, is that you guys end up doing deals together. Like you never even thought that you were going to be doing some of this stuff with people, but it's, you know, it's things that you have that um, they need. And it's also things that they have that you need. And you just right. better to get, we're better together, not apart. And we can right. do so much more together. So that's, that's key. That's yeah, key. Yeah. Yeah. It, it definitely changes lives um, if, right. if, if you choose it to right. do that but right so you know we i like to give people actionable steps on the on this podcast this is the oh, okay the podcast so you heard kariba's story you saw that he he saved up the money so he could buy his first house he took that money and he kept rolling it like he didn't take it and spend it so you know if something if building wealth is something that you want to do while getting out of your job. If you're building wealth and getting out of your job, then you should seriously consider, you know, saving up some money and start with buying just that one house and working Definitely. through that. And working Definitely. through that. And if you know, we gave you some good books to read to get your mindset where it needs to be. Um, and oh, uh, uh, Earl Nightingale. Listen to Earl Nightingale on uh, on YouTube. He's uh, is definitely inspiring. Okay, I'm going to write him down. I didn't know about he, he, him. He talks about uh, how to 95%, you know, don't achieve anything in life and mm-hmm. uh, end up either dead or broke. And the 5% will actually end up, four end up financially free. You know, the 1% is always going to be wealthy. They're not going anywhere. But he talks about ambition. He, he has a mellow tone. I, like, I just like listening to it. I just listen to it random. It's only, it's actually exactly 31 minutes long listening to it on YouTube. 
I'm going to have to check that out. I've never uh, listened to him, but I have heard someone, uh, it was actually Tony Robinson Sr. I don't know if you know him, but he um, talked, he likes stats and he mentioned that about the 95%, you know, don't do anything. So I guess, I don't know if he got it from Earl or not. <laughs> yeah. Maybe they was, they was looking at the same fact sheet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Numbers don't work. laughs> right, right. Because uh, I know his, his story was old. Uh, way back in the day, but right. But anyway, thanks for being on the podcast, Creep. I think you no gave problem. us some really good stuff. Um, really putting helping people put things into perspective. A lot of people are always thinking of, I want the big fat check. Um, I want to make it now. They're thinking cash flow, cash flow. Let's get this money. But I, I find it a lot of people aren't thinking of let's build this wealth. Let's right, right. Get this passive cash flow because I noticed like. I mean, I know you still working, but you be chilling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you're like, I right. don't know if I wanted to, but to be honest, I don't have to work because I'm, right. I mean, I'm doing all right. Like, right. So, <laughs> so like, it's, it's, it's all in what you want. It's all in yeah. what you want. And I appreciate you for sharing your perspective on things and sharing your story. Yeah, no problem. I hopefully I helped a lot of people out because, like I said, my story is going to be very different from everybody else's. Right. Uh, it definitely didn't come from anything. I didn't get nothing handed to me. Nothing. I'm the I'm the last child. I, I got stuff. I got leftover clothes handed to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think um, also something that's good to put in perspective. Like I know your story is different, but what I've noticed is a lot of people their stories start out similar. We're all in uncomfortable positions where we have yep. to make a decision to change. Yeah. Okay? Unless like your parents taught you how to do this. If you're coming, like changing your generation, like changing your um, family's yes. legacy, then you have to come to a point where you decide that, Hey, I need to do something different because they've been doing it this way for a long time and it ain't working. Right. And, and actually you have to have a sort of, in order for me to do what I did, I had to have a rebellious nature because if I have 95% of people that's, living the, the regular going the regular way about life oh get right. a good job get a good career work right. till you're 65 everybody's right. telling you that invest in 401k everybody's telling you that so you got to have a something has to click for you to be like you know this ain't working it didn't work for a lot of other people then why would it work for me so you have to come right. to terms and feel that you should be doing something else and it's gonna it's gonna contradict all your beliefs because you've been told that all your life Right, right. Well, I really do appreciate you being on. I'm about to wrap this up. But until next time, do it, movement listeners. See ya. Peace. <laughs> Thanks, guys, for checking out the Do It Movement podcast this week. I hope we inspired you to make some power moves now. If you haven't already, make sure you follow us for more info on our guests and new episodes at Do It Movement Pod on Instagram and at doitmovementpod.com. Make sure as you apply some of this knowledge, you tag us along the way by adding hashtag Do It Movement so that we can recognize the change makers. See you next week. <laughs>